This is just about calling your power back to yourself. Oftentimes we find in life the call to bring our power back, whether we realize we've given it out voluntarily or involuntarily, understanding that when we do wish to set a boundary within ourselves of reclaiming something that we feel we have given up, that there's this thing that often happens where we almost start to hold on to our own inner power. And even if we are reclaiming this power, it's still not our own in the sense of it comes from a source that's greater than us even. You know, if we think of all energy on Earth as essentially coming from the sun. So in the same way, when we do call our power back to ourselves, remembering to then offer it up. So perhaps in a biological sense, whether it's something about ourselves in our heart, something with our relationships and work or at home, a lot of this arises, of course, through our thoughts and then it takes motion in our hearts and then that's when we feel things and then that's when we understand that it's time to call our power back. And when we do this, we're starting to calm the energy in the heart. And, and that we can say that that's something that's worth doing. <laughs> uh, and at the same time, then, as we, as we bring that energy in, that energy from going outward, from being always sent outward into the world in the five senses, into our thoughts and our conditioning about the world, when we bring that in and that energy goes into the heart, then it goes up the spine into the medulla in this brainstem, this uh, more uh, primal area of the brain that's associated with our ego. And our ego can try to hold on and be protective of your energy of yourself because you're aware of that the ego is in many ways essentially our, our inborn defense mechanism. And so as we expand ourselves in trusting ourselves and in understanding that we play a role in this world and yet we are sovereign beings, that the next step is to offer that energy up, say, from the medulla to this prefrontal cortex, this point between the eyebrows, the third eye, and the center, the spirit of our, of our soul, of our spirit. And when we are aware that when we're in this flow, just like this river here, when we're aware of this flow of energy within us, that energy goes in one of two directions, more or less. It either goes out into the world or it goes in into our brain and our nervous system. And this is like the philosopher's stone, the elixir of life, that in many ways, we are the missing link, we are already everything that we need, we are the ones that we've been waiting for. And when you start to live in that way, that you're living to show the world what it's capable of, that you're living to show perhaps yourself what you're capable of. It's not about trying to prove anything necessarily as much as it is just living with this gnosis or knowing of where our divine inspiration and where our true power comes from. And that in many ways, this world often seeks to try and pull us into thinking that power is outside of us. And that that's kind of the fundamental root of this whole thing is that our roots, our soul, our being, our eternal essence, 
is connected to everything in the world and we can expand our perspective of ourself and our definition, our self-identity by reconnecting to say the meaning of life or this higher purpose that then shows us how we can then bring our energy into the world so that we're using our power effectively and and that when we've called our power back to ourselves it just rather than being something that oh i've just called my power back to myself and now i have it that's kind of uh only half half of the job so to speak that the next step is to then reclaim the energy so that you can offer it up effectively one say in your own uh quietness at home um in say a personal practice like with meditation or prayer or something like that where you're in your calm quiet space and you're allowing yourself to bridge these worlds of the seen and unseen of your dreams and just of the peace and bliss you know that's within yourself that you just have to give space to receive and that we have to offer all of ourselves into that present moment of practicing stillness and offering ourselves giving ourselves the space really just to feel what we have to feel and to think what we need to think and then allowing all of that to recede to the periphery so that we can focus on this eternal love this eternal consciousness that is within us all and of course with practice over time this feeling this sensation this awareness our perceptions expand so that we feel more at one with nature more at one with each other more at peace with the world around us and that that's a simple starting place for true power there's a reason why Jesus Christ was called the Prince of Peace, that there is great power in peace, great power beyond forcing things, that this world is so set on force as the modus operandi, the main way of accomplishing things. And of course, we all know that that's not the case, but so often we, for one reason or another, deem that to be the most effective route. And of course, there's a place for force that perhaps force is much better than violence. And that in understanding the truth of force, we understand the truth of power. We understand the truth of peace. We understand that within ourselves to wield great peace is to wield great power. Like Theodore Roosevelt said, talk less and carry a big stick. So it's mostly just about the way that we hold ourselves, that we position our hearts to this higher awareness that's within us and living with that awareness is a gift that we can bring to everyone around us. So thank you for watching. I wish you the best in discovering and learning more about yourself and about what life is. So thank you. Have a beautiful day. And enjoy Mother Nature.